welcome. Hello. Welcome to my solar panel off the grid three-way transfer switch system. This is what you're looking that's what you're looking at right here on this wall. All these boxes and relays, batteries, and there's solar panels on the roof. All this stuff combines together to make the building that's behind this wall run completely on solar power. And when the solar power fails, have two backups. Not just the grid, but another backup. And I'll explain that in a minute. The system's on right now. There's several meters that I'd like to draw your attention to. This one up here. All right. Wouldn't we all like to see that? This meter's a, a grid a uh, grid meter. And when I said, we, wouldn't we all like to see that? It's because this is the grid meter and it's showing 0, 0.0 amps. 0, 0.0. That means it's not pulling any power. The 242 above that, which now 241, for those of you that don't know the difference between voltage and amperage, the 241 doesn't have anything to do with the power that's being consumed and thus the power that you would be charged for. The amperage, which is in green, has everything to do with you being charged for it. The voltage at the top is just there for me as a technician to be able to determine have we lost power as we do lose power at this location quite often. Have we lost power and do I need to turn on the inverters if they're not already on? Speaking of inverters, these are the inverters down here. This bad boy is a Ames Power 5000 watt 220 60 hertz inverter, modified sine wave. And that one over there is a 110 volt modified sine wave Syntec inverter. And right now the Syntec is putting out 114 volts at 7 amps. And this one here is putting out 216 volts at no amps. The, all this does is, all it does is it runs the air conditioner because nothing here in the United States runs on 220 except big appliances, ACs, heaters, washing machines, well some washing machines, dryers, furnaces, that kind of thing. So, since we don't have the air conditioner on, zero amps. On the other hand, the seven amps on the Syntec that is because we have two six gang fluorescent bulbs up there. They've got, well that one's got four in there, but they're supposed to have six bulbs in them. And they draw about four amps. When I turn it off, it drops, turn the lights off, it drops way down. But that Syntex powering uh, one computer, a DVR for our camera system, that's powering uh, two internet modems, and it's powering it's, well, it's not powering the fans right now, but it, it will power the fans when the switch is turned on inside the building. And with that amount of draw, we're drawing about 7 amps, like I said. Now, all these relays, you may be wondering what in the world are 5-pin relays out of automobiles doing on a solar panel system. And if you watched my other videos, you'll know that I do a lot with automobiles. So that I, instead of, you know, putting in a contactor system so where you have a big relay and it's got three inputs and three outputs and you put your neutral into one and two hots in the other one and that's actually an AC what it's made for power switching I used DC power switches to power AC and I know some people out there aren't gonna like that but what this allows me to have it has more reliability I think because if there is a problem, I can just take one of them off and switch them with one of the blank ones down there at the end, and you're back in business. Whereas trying to purchase a specific made one for you know 220 volts is going to be difficult, and most of those are 24 volt DC AC coils. These are 12 volt, so that means that I can run these off of that battery pack and not have to put any kind of converter in there because that's a 12 volt, it's a bunch of 12 volt batteries wired in parallel. So you get 12 volts out with a lot of amp hours. So I don't have to do any converting. And speaking of 12 volts and batteries, the reason I did 12 volts, because a lot of people are saying, why didn't you do 48 volts or 36 volts or at least 24 to reduce the size of the wire? It's because a lot of, there's a good example, accessories 
run on 12 volts. So if I wanted to plug in like a fan or something and sit back here in a chair, I could just hook it up to the DC power. Whereas if I had 24 volts, I had to get 115 volts, plug it in the inverter, which wastes power, and then drop it back down to 12 volts, which wastes more power, and then the motor in the fan that wastes even more power. Whereas I could just connect it to the batteries and just have the energy losses in the fan itself. So that's one reason why I did 12 volts. The other reason is I have 12 volt solar panels. They're easier to hook up, whereas you don't, you don't have to go through and daisy chain them together in series so that if one panel fails, everybody fails. In parallel, which is the way they're all wired up there, if one panel fail, fails, everybody keeps going and that's already manifested itself. We've had this thing running for 30 minutes and it's already manifested itself. Up there on the roof, I installed some panels, 18 of them to be exact, and they produce 5.75 amps, for any of you who like to know. Put them all in, hook them up, and nothing happened. I was getting like six volts out of them with no load. And they're 12 volt panels, and they're 21.6 open circuit voltage, and there was no batteries connected to them at the time. So I was wondering where all the power was going. Diagnosed it, found the panel. The one panel was putting out 1.7 volts. Everybody else was putting out 19 to 21.6. So I pulled that panel off, and the rest of the 17 panels up there are still running fine. That's the beauty of the parallel system. Now, down here we have these die-hard battery chargers, and uh, they uh, are just bare bones battery chargers. All they are, they got the rectifier diodes in them. They got the transformer and then rate selection switches and then it comes out. What those do is they're clamped onto these, this battery pack here and they're controlled by these logic boards. And what these logic boards do with the chargers is whenever this logic board senses that the voltage is below 10 volts, it activates both chargers to bring the battery voltage up in case the solar panels failed or it wasn't sunny or cloudy or rainy, what have you, to keep the batteries from being damaged. It uses the grid power to charge up the batteries. This logic board here controls the charging system, but in a different way. And this logic board also, whenever the voltage drops too low, if the low voltage cutouts haven't kicked in in the inverters yet, this logic board shuts the inverters down and switches it over to grid. Now, if the automatic shutdowns inside these inverters have engaged and shut the power down, you would think, well, you're without power because the inverter shut down and it's not on grid. Well, no. These two relays up here control these inverters. So if one of the inverters decides I'm going to fail today or one of the inverters gets too much power drawn on it, the low voltage doesn't kick on quick enough and the inverter has the high amperage shutdown and it shuts down whichever inverter, the, the big inverter is controlled by the big relay and the small one by the small relay. Whichever inverter shuts down, its relay detects, okay, I'm shut down, I need to switch over to grid. And it sends the signal down to the control relays here, if necessary. And then it sends it down to the power changing relays, which are down here. And that isolates the solar panel or the inverters and then engages the grid. And when somebody comes back here, resets it, it isolates the grid, engages the solar panels. And I'll demonstrate that isolation right now. If we the camera could follow, follow me over here to the uh, to this inverter. Right now there the lights are running. We're drawing 6.8 amps, and this is to simulate a high amperage condition where the inverter would alarm and shut itself down. So how we simulate that is just by turning the switch off, inverter goes to zero, you'll see it on the meter, the meter will go blank, and then what will happen is its control relay will send the message to the power control relays to, we need to turn on the grid, and over there on the grid meter, the amperage will go up to just about 6.8 amps. So here we go and off. It was that quick. We're up to 6.3 amps on that, that end there. And this is at zero. And you probably heard the fans, the ventilation fans in the back of us went off when I shut it down. Now I'll turn it back on 
and then I'd like the camera to show the lights as I turn that off. It's almost an instantaneous change. I want you to be able to see that. Instantaneous change whenever I uh, turn it off. Now, coming back on, I wouldn't say it's instantaneous. It takes a minute for the inverter to spool up. So, turn it on. And then inverter spooled up, and it's back online. However, the computers inside, whenever I turn it back on, they don't experience that flicker. The reason these lights experience the flicker is because they're fluorescent lights and the ballast has to re-energize itself and then it kicks on. Now, if we'll go back up there to the lights, this is what would happen if it, uh, the amperage on the low voltage side was too much. That's how quick it was. Barely even saw it. That's what makes this system so nice. It's instantaneous changeover. Now, the same thing would happen with the inverter on the high voltage side, but there's no high voltage appliances in here. It's only in the in the office, so I can't show you that. But the same same setup works, same relay controls, just different isolators down here on the high voltage side. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is I said it was a three-way transfer switch, not a two-way. The three-way third way is the generator. You can barely see it over here, but it says generator connection relays. And over there in the corner, back behind the wall, is a 8,750 watt generator. In case it wasn't sunny, the solar panels shut down. Low voltage disen is disengaged them, and the grid shut down because it's stormy and we've blown down some power lines. In that case, this relay would detect the grid is shut down, I need to start the generator. Then it sends the signal to the fuel control, ignition control, and start control relays. And that turns on the fuel ignition, and then the start control relay sends its signal to the starter relay. That engages the starter solenoid on the generator, generator rolls over, and whenever it starts, this relay tells the battery chargers that the generator is on and it tells the starter generator is on okay starter off then it tells the isolators okay generators running turn it on and there's a way to test the generator if you know you need to run it or something like that I would just take this wire here connect it to positive one of the positive leads and it would activate the generator right now the generator doesn't have a battery in it so I can't show you that but what I can show you is Whenever I turn off the grid, and I'm going to turn off the grid right, this is the uh, grid isolation breaker, by the way. And the breaker panels are all off because I've been working, working on them. But this relay, you probably couldn't hear it, but it just clicked, sending the start command. And it would be rolling over right now, trying to start, but there's no battery, so it can't do that. So if we turn it back on, it goes back into generator in automatic or just standby mode. So that's my solar panel three-way transfer switch system that I just got working today. Hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, let me know. I'll be happy to answer them because I know when I was building this, I had a lot of questions that nobody could answer. And I figured out the answers just by doing it. Uh, one of those things that just a little tidbit here at the end. These relays up here with modified sine wave inverters, Make sure you get a good solid relay when you're hooking them to modified sine wave because if you don't, the modified sine wave causes these relays to pulsate a little bit. So sometimes it's a trial and error with getting a good relay, especially when they're coming from overseas and the quality's bad, getting the perfect relay to work with these modified sine wave inverters. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a good day.